in this video, I'm going to be discussing the business deduction related to travel. So when is travel business and when is it personal? I'm going to answer that question as well as these. What is included in travel costs? Like is airfare included, lodging, are meals also included? How to structure your travel plan so that you can get your business trip 100% deducted? Um, what happens when you include personal days as part of your travel plans? Can you deduct your spouse or your children's travel costs if they tag along with you? And how many hours per day should you work to count that day as a business day and be able to write it off in terms of a business deduction? So as you can tell, we have a lot to get to, so let's jump into the video. So for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Navi Miraj. I'm a CPA who specializes help in helping real estate professionals. So that's you, the real estate agent, realtor, or broker. But stay tuned if you're just a you know plain vanilla small business owner, this video is going to apply to you as well. So if you've subscribed to the channel, then you know that sort of this video that's discussing travel is part of the tax planning series that I'm putting out. And so we've already talked about the auto deduction and home office. And if you haven't seen those videos um, and you're watching this on YouTube, go look at my YouTube channel and you can watch those videos as well. So what are some examples of business travel? So that could be when you meet with a client, it could be meeting with a vendor, um, it could be a real estate conference for those of my real estate professionals watching out there. Um, it could be training or continuing education. It could even be visiting you know, one of your broker's office in another state or county. Um, so all of that could count as business travel. Um, could also be for you real estate investors out there, could also be to purchase um, real estate. So not the trips to go just look at the real estate, but that trip that you took to actually purchase the real estate could be deductible. Um, it could also be working on real estate that you already own. So these are all great examples of what types of trips could be considered um, a business trip. So what's not business travel? What's not business travel would be, as I mentioned kind of earlier, looking at real estate, um, but you're not gonna purchase it. Like if you're just shopping, if you will, uh, looking at that real estate, that's not gonna be a deductible business expense. But if you actually purchase the transaction, then that would be, sorry, purchase the piece of real estate rather. Uh, taking a vacation and answering emails and calls while there is not going to be a business deduction okay so i have clients who have another home um, that they go to to travel and they just happen to work from there that's not going to cut it um, what costs are included so you could deduct your airfare uh, baggage fees hotel airbnb uh, rental car the gas for that rental car taxi uh, uber tips that you would leave on um, for gratuity, tolls if you're driving yourself, parking, um, those are just some examples. Um, meals count as well, but remember the whole 50% rule where your meals are 50% tax deductible. And I've got a separate video on meals and you can watch that and find that on YouTube. Um, so how do you structure your trip so that the whole entire trip is 100% business deduction? So behind me, um, I've got um, a couple of scenarios for you. So obviously this is, you know, Wednesday through a Tuesday example of a week. Um, and I've got three scenarios. So the first scenario is, um, we've got travel on a Wednesday, you're doing business on Thursday and Friday and on Saturday, uh, you're traveling back. So in this scenario, we've got a hundred percent of the airfare is going to be deductible, a hundred percent of the lodging, um, a hundred percent of your travel costs is deductible. 50% of the meals that you had on the travel days and the business days, okay? A second scenario is where, again, we're traveling, we're doing business on Thursday and Friday, Saturday is a personal day, you're just sightseeing, Sunday you travel back. So in this example, you still take 100% deduction for your airfare, but you're gonna do the math here and realize you've got one personal day, five sort of business days, if you will, and Therefore, you can deduct 80% of your lodging costs and other travel related costs. 50% um, of the meals on your travel day and on your business day, but none of the meals on your personal day. Okay, let me give you, you know, sort of the trifecta, if you will, scenario three. So here's where you travel on a Wednesday, you do business on Thursday or Friday, 
or I should say Thursday and Friday. Saturday and Sunday, 100% personal. On Monday, you have another business trip, so you notice that the weekend is sort of bookended with business, and on Tuesday, you travel back. Um, so I mentioned it just a second ago, but I just wanna make sure that you realize that there's business on the Friday and business on the Monday, and you didn't just have business on Monday for your convenience, like you had to actually transact business on Monday to meet with a client or a vendor, or maybe a real estate conference was on a Friday and a Monday. So in this example, 100% of the airfare is deductible, 100% of the lodging is deductible, um, your travel costs you know, are deductible, and 50% of the meals for all of these days, including the personal days, are deductible. So that's a great way to you know, write off as much travel as possible as if you can sort of plan your trip accordingly. Um, can you deduct spouses or kids who uh, travel with you? The answer is yes, with a but, and that but is they should be employees and should have a legit, you know, bona fide reason for traveling with you related to the business. So an example of that could be, you know, maybe they're a teenager and they run all your social media. And so they'll be documenting the trip. Um, they'll be posting on your social media, you know, the conference that you're attending and they're also benefiting from that conference as well. Um, or if you own real estate in another you know, state, for example, and they're helping you rehab that property in between tenants. That's another example where you know, that child or spouse is traveling with you and they're doing work with you to rehab that building. So how many hours a day do you need to work on these business days for it to actually be considered business? So there's some rules around that, but you need to work at least four hours per day. Um, for that to be considered business. And the best way that you can you know, make note of that or keep track of that is just to have a log or you know, if you use Outlook or whatever calendar app you use, make sure it has your travel plans and it says where you're going. If you're um, attending a seminar or some continuing education, you know, the sort of outline of that seminar or the agenda what ha or what have you, um, keep that, take a picture of it, make sure it's there so if you're ever audited, they know like you had a legit reason to take this as a business uh, trip. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, what about if I take a cruise or I go on an international trip? Um, the answer is yes, it's possible, but there are many exceptions when it comes to cruises and international trips as well. Um, and it's really beyond the scope of that video. If I could talk about that international trip for probably 30 minutes on its own to get into all the details, and that's sort of outside the scope here, so I'm not gonna be try, uh, talking about cruises or international trips. Yes, it can be done. Cruises is really challenging. International trips, not, as, not so challenging, but there's a lot of different rules and nuances that we need to follow. So hopefully that cleared things up for you and that answered your questions related to business travel and how much of it that you can deduct and how do you stay within the rules of the IRS to be able to deduct it all. Um, that being said, like all of my videos, I'm just trying to make you aware of these things in case your tax professional or tax preparer isn't educating you about these items. If they're not, the chance is that you probably should move on to another accountant. Um, but you should consult with your tax professional and see if they're on board with some of the things that I'm saying. If they're not, like I said, consult with me or shop another CPA in your area. If you got value out of this video, please do subscribe because as I mentioned, you know, this is part of a larger series where I'm gonna be teaching you about different strategies to save thousands of dollars of taxes. And um, in the next video, we're gonna be talking about hiring children, okay? And that strategy alone could save you thousands of dollars in taxes. And I'm not being sarcastic, I'm saying literally it can save you thousands. Um, so again, I appreciate all the comments, all the feedback, I appreciate you subscribing. Um, do leave a comment below if you have a question, I'll try to get, get to it and answer you. Um, and those comments help me to determine what other videos I'm gonna make, because I want the content to be all about you and your needs. So with that said, um, I will see you in the next video.